As always, I bring you guys the best of the best speakers. And my favorite part about this is the speakers and trainers. A lot of them are really good friends. A lot of them become friends, but also, as I always say, the ability to learn how to learn is the greatest ability one can have. And so I'm always constantly, I've got my pen and piece of paper, jotting down notes and ideas, but our next speaker, which we can just call this just a conversation back and forth as we go. Um, I first met Joan and we'll give you guys where you can find all of her content and find her incredible information and her book and all of her stuff. We'll make sure we put that in the description, but I first met Joan. I want to say the first time we met was at the Sedona leader of leaders mastermind. Is that right, Joan? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I- since then, have we traveled the world? We have. Yeah. With your amazing events. Yes, we have. Yeah. I tell her like she asked where it's at and if it's at a cool place, she's like, oh yeah, I, I'm there. I can make time. But we hung out a couple times, Destin, Florida, Marco Island, Florida, Sedona, Arizona, Bye. Dubai. Woo. And you went bungee or you, sorry, you went skydiving after we left. I've done that skydive. Pretty yeah. insane. We did Dinner in the sky, that was what, 180 feet or so, where you just go straight up in the sky, you're eating dinner, your feet are dangling. A little sketch, but it was fun. Right, right. No, that was, there was so, so many good times um, on that trip and and all of them. I've really enjoyed that. Um, And then you get to learn too from the best of the best because you draw in those leaders from the industry. And so it's super, super valuable. Yeah. I've loved it. Well, they're a ton of fun and I always look forward to them and hanging out with you. Um, and you have so much, we'll go through a quick bio rapid fire recap, but you've been in this industry forever, which is crazy. Cause you still look like you're like 25, 30 years old. Oh and yeah. So, you know, going to blow people away with your experience. So rapid fire, Joan, how long have you been in the direct sales slash network marketing profession? Yeah. So I've been in the industry since 2001. So what's that like 22 years? Yeah. It's hard for me to even believe that. That's crazy. So you've seen, you've seen a lot. You've seen pretty much it all. The rise, the fall, the rise, the fall, this works, this doesn't people Mm -hmm. adapting as they go, how long did it take you to become a six figure annual earner? Mm -hmm. Well, first off, when I first started, and I, I like to share this so that people realize that I had sales experience, you know, I'd worked at Nordstrom at a corporate level and I grew up in sales with my family's businesses But gosh, Rob, when I started network marketing, I felt like a fish out of water. I mean, I had all of these insecurities and fears that came up. And immediately I knew that in order to be successful, I would follow and watch people that were successful. And then I just copy what they did because gosh, 20 some years ago, We didn't have podcasts. We weren't working online. None of this stuff was available. So I would find, I would be at an event in my first months of business and I'd be watching. I'd say, okay, I want to do that. And then I'd run and go find them and find a way to work with them. I mean, that really is how I started. And to answer your question directly, I started making six figures at about the nine month to a year mark in my first business. And I never, I mean, from each company that I was with, I was still able to rebuild and make six figures continually from then on. Yeah. I like how you shared your background. That was going to be my next question. Cause I knew, I knew, uh, you know, we've, we've talked at length a ton about your background. Yeah. You were always hustling. Like you were always extremely competitive and, and used it to your advantage, which I love, love, love to see and an extremely, extremely hard worker. And every single successful network marketer that I know has become obsessed. Now, 
Are there those people that maybe right place, right time got lucky? Yeah. I say true wealth is ability. It's not what you have in the bank. So I don't consider that as, as the true success. Don't begrudge them. That's great. That's part of the great parts about the profession, but those that have that true wealth, they become obsessed. Now I get it. Some of you becoming obsessed. You only have five hours a week right now to start. And your goal is to transition into more and more and more. I know when I started, I was running a tennis club, but I was obsessed. I was thinking about who am I going to speak to? What am I going to say? How can I learn? I'm listening to books on lunch breaks. I'm listening to books, right? On audio while I'm driving. That was my university on wheels because I needed it because of my insecurities. And I also knew I needed to increase my skill set. And so now I was adding up the other day. And in the last 14 years, I've read slash listened to about 1100 plus books um, and I try to, you know, who knows how much is retained. It doesn't matter. Even if it's 0.01%, it's still, right. it's a lot of content, right? Right. Right. Well, I'll, I'll just say this, that, you know, there came a point where I literally was not going to settle for anything less than what I wanted. And I defined what that success looked like along the way, but I think the challenge for me, you know, the competitive part of me was, you know, being raised by a family that, you know, they're very sports oriented and very, uh, you know, again, owning our own business, my dad and his brothers and everyone was in sales. And then your brothers, right? (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So you kind of have this kind of already in the blood type of deal and so a lot of it was competing against me. I mean, meaning like, okay, I made 10 calls yesterday. Today, I'm going to up it to 20 or, you know, just really fine tuning those basics. And once I was able to start fine tuning the basics, then I got really, really hungry. Like I was like, okay, I'm pretty good at this now, you know? And if I could go and now help other people do this because I was so passionate about the success I was having. And it was more like it changed my lifestyle. In other words, you know, I was a single mom for many years in there. And I mean, my son had a great dad and everything, but just meaning we weren't together. And it was really important for me to show that example to my son. So certain things drove me to that hunger and that desire, which that's what I found over the years. I can't create that in people, but boy, when they have it, those are the people I love to work with because you can just tweak things and help them with, you know, just little teeny uh, tools or strategies. And this is what, what, you know, really takes off. And that's really what happened to me too. I feel like your specialty is leadership and everything that we do ties back into leadership, even many of those little things that we feel like don't. And I know that your book that I got a a pre-read before it launched and I got to help you a little bit with it. And it was fun to see the process, but flip the switch. I know there's a lot of principles that tie into leadership that can help everyone out. And when we think of leadership, I think there's a lot of uh, objections and concerns in the profession where people feel unworthy. They sure. feel imposter syndrome. Uh, in, in many ways, they feel like they need to be perfect, even though they'll say, well, I know I don't need to be perfect, but they feel like they need to be a lot better than they are. How does one, because they, they know that they want to develop as a leader, how does one, I mean, to start, how does one start to overcome some of those massive limiting beliefs that are attached to their interpretation of leadership? Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing I would say to anybody is welcome, meaning I know I've talked enough to you, Coach Fryer, Ray Higdon, I mean, you know, all of the people that have really created large, successful enterprises, everybody has gone through these same kinds of feelings. So the first thing is you're not alone. 
welcome to the world of network mm-hmm. marketing, right? Because it really does show your underbelly. But as far as leadership, this is what I believe. Right now, more than ever, we are in need in this world of strong leadership, of quality, integral leadership. And I believe that in network marketing, when you're somebody that is following your company's plan with sales, sponsoring, recruiting, whatever you want to call it, you can teach someone to do what you do. And I have heard it, I've seen it over the years, many times where people, you know, I need to know more before I build a team. And my feeling is you don't need to know more. You need to just bring people along with you because leadership is certainly standing out and, and, you know, being in front of, but when you turn around and look who's behind you, we're leading in all areas of our lives, whether we think we are or not. So my feeling is if you're somebody that loves people and you want to help people, then just know that you're already a leader and you can develop higher level skills along the way. Because the people that are constantly getting ready to get ready to get ready to get ready to get Hmm. ready and they're not executing, they're missing opportunities to serve people. And the other thing is, is as we look at that, I mean, I like how you said, you know, we welcome to the club, but also we just, we start, you can't make the plan for the plan of the plan of the plan, right? Because then it's never is, look, every single leader you look up to, every single leader you look up to had issues, right? Like, I look at, you know, a specific leader that I looked up to, um, Martin Luther King. Absolutely. Just, I just am in awe of, you know, the strength and the inner strength and, and he's still a leader to me, but, uh, he struggled a lot with, with, uh, his spouse and home life and, uh, and actually being true to her. Mm-hmm. And I, I see that. And understand. And of course, that aspect of his life is not something that he would be a mentor to me, of course. Right. But the other aspects, he still is. Sure. And so understand that you're not going to be perfect, but being a leader is not about being perfect. It's it's the definition of the word leader. The, the Latin root is pathfinder. Mm-hmm. And so you're a pathfinder. Maybe it's a pathfinder at the beginning of just helping someone to make that one invite or plugging them in the system or right. Making their money back. We don't have to make it, you know, this overwhelming, yeah. we're going to speak in front of 10,000 people on stage and everyone's going to be like, is this person making a million dollars or not? You don't have to go that far. So you do such a good job of developing leaders. I know between like your books and maybe, maybe actually, if you could please tell them a little bit about some of the programs you have for developing leaders and maybe, maybe uh, sneak in a little bit, give them like a preview of (laughs) some of the things you do to help someone actually just develop Mm -hmm. that leadership. Yeah. So, well, gosh, you know, I think that the book, which, oh, I just happen to have it right here. (laughs) <laughs> and look, Rob Sperry wrote the forward. Thank you. I got I to gotta read it. One of the first ones. I was excited. Uh, uh, you helped so much. And I so, well, I, I mean, I so appreciate that. I'll always be thankful. Um, the book is, you know, it's split into just like two different kind of, the first four chapters are really about working on yourself. And the second four chapters are about working with others. So. Each chapter gives people kind of some stories, but it actually gives you tools and action steps of doing, you know, whatever it is, mindset, fear, getting out of fear, learning just some of these tools. And then, of course, the working with others has to do with, you know, empowering them and and just different things Mm -hmm. that I've learned along the way. As far as the courses that I have for developing leaders, I have a a course called Building Leaders Through Coaching. 
And that one has been really huge for people that are really beginning in the beginning levels and higher levels. So I've got every level on there, meaning people that are just entering, let's say you've got a team of seven to 10 and, and, or I've got some black diamond leaders that are at the highest level of the company that are fine tuning some of their skills. Yeah. So the idea behind a lot of these things that I teach is taking a skill and elevating your communication. So it would be with your team, with your customer and client base and feeling confident. I mean, that's the whole thing is that we can give people the words and we can give them the scripts. And I do that as well. I mean, I I think it's so important, but I want to help them with the internal confidence. So why does this make sense to do it this way? And how, when you do it this way, is the result going to be different? The majority of people that I have seen struggle with leadership, it's usually a lack of connection with their team members. So as much as we love automation and text message and all this, you don't really develop people that way. But in the course that I have, I show people how to identify leadership qualities how to invite them to partner with you. And then you're only really working with a core small group of people. So you're actually spending less time than what most people think, you know, okay, I'm working with everybody almost the same. And that is- you're spending with the right people. Right. You You have to be able to, remember when you said in the beginning, like, you know, people are- like that are hungry and have desire, like those are some of the traits I look for. Then I look at their numbers. What are they currently doing right now? Are they consistent? It's, you know, the right people are the people that have the desire, 10 out of 10 desire, and they're hungry, 10 out of 10, and that they're in the process of mastering the business basics. See, then when you go to work with them on helping them develop others, you've already got a foundation. We're not trying to take and make somebody a leader that has low desire or that has low confidence in, you know, even the, the, uh, you know, business basic skills of that. They're in the, like the slower program of the systems that you create. And what I love is that it's just not, it's like everybody knows the value and the importance of leadership, but inside of our profession, it's, it's really rarely taught. And especially with how to systematize that portion. So it's like, everyone talks about how it's so important. And I think everyone just gets imposter syndrome, overwhelmed. What do I do? Where do I start? You know, who do I work with? What if they're a little better than me? Right? Like what's the content? How often do I speak to all these questions. I mean, I remember when I started like the person at the front of the room makes the most amount of money. And I'm there is like this introvert where public speaking is my worst skill by far. And I'm thinking, how am I ever going to do this? Like, they're not teaching me like, what else is there to leadership? How can I become that person as we go? Well, where, where would one find though, this, um, your coaching for leadership? So if you can hear this nice, can you hear that? I can't hear it. Oh, uh-uh. good. I'm so glad. It's a fire alarm. Uh, oh. Yeah. So that's always <laughs> nice. But it's a test. Anyway, so where they can find that is join my group, Flip the Switch. So join the Flip the Switch community. And we can put that link down in the, the um, comments. And then DM me. So just direct message me to apply. And I would love to chat with anybody that's interested in elevating their leadership skills, as well as anybody that really, you know, they they may not know how to partner with and develop their team members. And I want to share one last thing about that. And that is that most recently I worked with a group of people that 
had experience, but again, remember when you've got the skill of knowing how to identify them, you're saving so much time for, for the Mm -hmm. leader and, and you're already working with people that are ready to do the work. So the energy and the momentum that you create is huge. Well, most recently we developed 12 leaders in a matter of six weeks just by using the strategy that I teach. And I know, I I mean, I knew it was very valuable, but it wasn't until I started seeing people go through the course that I saw even how valuable it really is and the need for it. Because they don't teach this in most companies. Most of the monies that the companies have go to the business basics and stuff like that. So I really believe that the coaching skills, the elevating your knowledge around identifying who to work with, what to do with them when you get them, and then showing people the strategy by coupling it with their comp plan, this is what most people need and they're lacking that. So there's a lot of lack of confidence out there. And I'm seeing people going through this program that are like, I mean, some of these people are people that have 20 years experience that are like, oh my gosh, I Ah. never knew that kind of stuff. Well, because you're so good at identifying exactly where, what they're missing and then what they need to do. And you've created that, you know, that huge, here's the problem. Let's identify it. Here's the solution. Here are the systems to help you with that solution. And think about this, all of you, this is what I'll say to finish is, A lot of you get to this income that you just get stuck and you keep hitting it and you keep getting stuck unless you have that random huge sale, right? Flash sale, Black Friday sale, you know, BOGO, whatever you want to call it. Like you got all these different things that happen. That's a quick fix. It's not the true building, the true foundation, right? That you need to. And it's important that you understand that you're stuck where your leadership is stuck. And I, I, at first that was really hard for me because I was looking in a mirror and I could see all my insecurities, but then eventually I said, you know what, this is great because this is going to help me to become a better human being. And because of network marketing, I'm a better husband, better father, better friend, better neighbor, better person. Still got a long ways to go in many, many different areas of my life. But the main thing is, you know what, I'm okay with that because I'm making continual progress. I'm not too hard on myself. I'm hard enough that I progress and push myself, but not too hard that I feel that negative guilt or shame. So I challenge all of you to really up your game, up your leadership. And Joan's one of those people, one of those experts on leadership. That's why I love, love having these conversations with her. I get to talk with her on a daily basis about anything and everything. And so it's a ton of fun. Joan, thanks so much for making time. I know your your schedule, uh, especially the last several months, has been absolutely just insane. I just want to say thank you so much for coming on and and sharing some of your incredible knowledge from the last 20 years. Uh, Well, I want to thank you, Rob, for having me. And um, gosh, just everything that you're doing for the industry is so amazing and it's so needed. So thank you again for having me.